Wonder, pages 41 to 50. Around the room. Ms. Potosa told us a little about who she was. It was boring stuff about where she originally came from and how she was always wanted to teach and how she left her job on Wall Street about six years ago to pursue her dream and teach kids. She ended by asking if anyone had any questions and Julian raised his hand. Yes, she had to look at the list to remember his name. Julian, that's cool about how you're pursuing your dream, he said. Thank you. You're welcome, he smiled proudly. Okay, so why don't you tell us a little about yourself, Julian? Actually, here's what I want everyone to do. Think of two things you want other people to know about you. Actually, wait a minute. How many of you came from Beecher Lower School? About half of the kids raised their hands. Okay, so a few of you already know each other. But the rest of you, I guess, are new to the school, right? Okay, so I think every, so everyone think of two things you want to, other people to know about you. And if you know something about other kids, try to think of things you don't already know about you. Okay? Okay. So let's start with Julian, and we'll go around the room. Julian scrunched up his face and started tapping his forehead like he was thinking really hard. Okay, whenever you're ready, Ms. Potosa said. Okay, so number one is that, do me a favor and start with your names, okay? Ms. Potosa interrupted. It'll help me remember everyone. Oh, okay. So my name is Julian. And the number one thing I'd like to tell everyone about myself is that I just got Battleground Mystic for my Wii and it's totally awesome. And the number two thing is that we got a ping pong table this summer. Very nice. I love ping pong, said Miss Potosa. Does anyone have any questions for Julian? Is Battleground Mystic multiplayer or one player, said the kid named Miles. Not those kinds of questions, guys, said Miss Potosa. Okay, so how about you? She pointed to Charlotte probably because her desk was closest to the front. Oh, sure. Charlotte didn't hesitate for even a second, like she knew exactly what she wanted to say. My name is Charlotte. I have two sisters, and we just got a new puppy named Suki in July. We got her from an animal shelter, and she's so, so cute. That's great, Charlotte. Thank you, said Miss Potosa. Okay, then, who's next? lamb to slaughter. Like a lamb to slaughter. Something that you say about someone who goes somewhere calmly, not knowing that something unpleasant is going to happen to them. I googled it last night. That's what I th was thinking when Ms. Potosa called my name and suddenly it was my turn to talk. My name is August, I said. And yeah, I kind of mumbled it. What? said someone. Can you speak up, honey? Ms. Potosa said. My name is August, I said louder, forcing myself to look up. I, um, have a sister named Via and a dog named Daisy. And, um, that's it. Wonderful, said Ms. Potosa. Anyone have any questions for August? No one said anything. Okay, you're next, said Ms. Potosa to Jack. Wait, I have a question for August asked Julian, raising his hand. Why do you have that tiny braid in the back of your hair? Is that like a pot on thing? Yeah, I shrugged, nodded. What's a pot on thing? What's a pot on thing? Said Ms. Potosa, smiling at me. It's from Star Wars, answered Julian. A pot on is a Jedi apprentice. Oh, Interesting, said Miss Potosa, looking at me. So are you into Star Wars, August? I guess, I nodded, not looking up, because I really wanted to just go slide under the desk. Who's your favorite character? asked Julian. I started thinking maybe he wasn't so bad. Django Fett. What about Darth Sidious? He said, do you like him? Okay, guys, you can talk about Star Wars stuff at recess, said Mrs. Potosa cheerfully, but let's keep going. We haven't heard from you yet.
she said to Jack. Now it was Jack's turn to talk. But I admit, I didn't hear a word he said. Maybe no one got the Darth Sidious thing, and maybe Julian didn't mean anything at all. But in Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith, Darth Sidious's face gets burned by Sith lightning and becomes totally deformed. His skin gets all shriveled up and his whole face just kind of melts. I peeked at Julian and he was looking at me. Yeah, he knew what he was saying. She was kind. There was a lot of shuffling around when the bell rang and everyone got up to leave. I checked my schedule and it said my next class was English, room 321. I didn't see, stop to see if anyone else from my homeroom was going my way. I just zoomed out of the class and down the hall and sat as far from the front as possible. The teacher, a really tall man with a yellow beard, was writing on the chalkboard. The kids came in laughing and talking in little groups, but I didn't look up. Basically, the same thing that happened in homeroom happened again. No one sat next to me except for Jack, who was joking around with some kids who weren't in our homeroom. I could tell Jack was the kind of kid who other kids like. He had a lot of friends. He made people laugh. When the second bell rang, everyone got quiet, and the teacher turned around and faced us. He said his name was Mr. Brown, and then he started talking about what we would be doing with this semester. At a certain point, somewhere between A Wrinkle in Time and Shun of the Sea, he noticed me but kept right on talking. I was mostly doodling in my notebook when he talked, but every once in a while, I would sneak a look out at the other students. Charlotte was in this class, so were Julian and Henry. Miles wasn't. Mr. Brown had written on the chalkboard in big black letters, P R E C E P T. Okay, everyone, write this down at the very top of your first page in your English notebook. As we did, he told us what to do. He said, okay, so who can tell me what a precept is? Does anyone know? No one raised their hands. Mr. Brown smiled, nodded, and turned around to write on the chalkboard again. Precepts equal rules about really important things. Like a motto, someone called out. Like a motto, said Mr. Brown, nodding as he continued writing on the board. Like a famous quote, like a line from a fortune cookie. Any saying or ground rule that can motivate you. Basically, a precept is anything that helps guide us when making decisions about really important things. He wrote all of that on the chalkboard and then turned around and faced us. So, what are some really important things, he asked us. A few kids raised their hands, and as he pointed at them, he gave them the, their answers, which he wrote on the chalkboard in really, really sloppy handwriting. Rules, schoolwork, homework. What else, he said as he wrote, not even turning around. Just call things out. He wrote everything everyone called out. Family, parents, pets. One girl called out, the environment. The environment. He wrote on the chalkboard and added, our world. Sharks, because they eat dead things in the ocean, said one of the boys, a kid named Reed. And Mr. Brown wrote down sharks. Bees, seatbelts, recycling, friends. Okay, said Mr. Brown, writing all those things down. He turned around when he finished writing to face us again. But no one's named the most important thing of all. We all looked at him, out of ideas. God? said one kid. And I could tell that even though Mr. Brown wrote God down, that wasn't the answer he was looking for. Without saying anything else, he wrote down, Who we are. Who we are, he said, underlining each word as he said it. Who we are, us, right? What kind of people are we? What kind of person are you? Isn't that the most important thing of all? Isn't that the kind of question we should be asking ourselves all the time? What kind of person am I? Did anyone happen to notice the plaque next, door, next to the door of the school? Anyone read what it says? Anyone? He looked around, but no one knew the answer. It says, know thyself, he said, smiling and nodding, and learning who you are is what you're here to do. I thought we were here to learn English, Jack cracked. 
which made everyone laugh. Oh, yeah, that too, Mr. Brown answered, which I thought was very cool of him. He turned around and wrote in big, huge block letters that sp spread out all the way across the chalkboard. Mr. Brown's September Precept. When given the choice between being right or being kind, choose kind. Okay, so everyone, he said, facing us again, I want you to start a brand new section in your books. Call it Mr. Brown's Precepts. He kept talking to us as we did what he was asking us to do. Put today's tape, date at the top of the first page. And from now on, at the beginning of every month, I'm going to write a new Mr. Brown precept on the chalkboard, and you're going to write it down in your notebook. Then we're going to discuss that precept and what it means. At the end of the month, you're going to write an essay about it and what it means to you. So by the end of the year, you'll all have your own list of precepts to take away with you. Over the summer, I asked my students to come up with their very own personal precept. Write it on a postcard and mail it to me from wherever you go on your summer vacation. People really do that? Said one girl whose name I didn't know. Oh yeah, he answered. People really do that. I've had students send me new precepts years after they've graduated from the school, actually. It's pretty amazing. He paused and stroked his beard. But anyway, next summer seems like a long way off, I know, he joked, which made us laugh. So everyone, relax a bit while I take attendance, and then we're finished with that. I'll start telling you about all the fun stuff we're going to be doing this year in English. He pointed to Jack when he said this, which was also funny, so we all laughed at that. As I wrote down Mr. Brown's September precept, he, I suddenly realized that I was going to like school, no matter what. Lunch. Via had warned me about lunch in middle school, so I guess I should have known it would be hard. I just hadn't expected it to be this hard. Basically, all the kids from the fifth grade classes poured into the cafeteria at the same time, talking loudly and bumping into one another while they ran to different tables. One of the lunchroom teachers said something about no seat saving allowed, but I didn't know what she meant, and maybe no one else did either because just about everyone was saving seats for their friends. I tried to sit down at one table, but the kid in the next chair said, oh, sorry, but somebody else is sitting here. So I moved to an empty table and just waited for everyone to finish stampeding and the lunchroom teacher to tell us what to do next. As she started telling us the cafeteria rules, I looked around to see where Jack Will was sitting, but I didn't see him on my side of the room. Kids were still coming in as the teachers started calling the first few tables to get their trays and stand on, stand on the line on the counter. Julian, Henry, and Miles were sitting at a table toward the back of the room. Mom had packed me a cheese sandwich, graham crackers, and a juice box so I didn't need to stand in line when my table was called. Instead, I just concentrating, concentrated on opening my backpack, pulling out my lunch bag, and slowly opening the aluminum foil wrapping of my sandwich. I could tell I was being stared at without even looking up. I knew what people, I knew that people were nudging each other, watching me out of the corners of their eyes. I thought that I was used to those kinds of stares by now, but I guess I wasn't. There was one table of girls that I knew were whispering about me because they were talking behind their hands. Their eyes and whispers kept bouncing over me. I hate the way I eat. I know how weird it looks. I had a surgery to fix my cleft palate when I was a baby, and then a second cleft surgery when I was four, but I still have a hole in the roof of my mouth. And even though I had jaw alignment surgery a few years ago, I have to chew, fruit, chew food in the front of my mouth. I didn't even realize how this looked until I was at a birthday party once, and one of the kids told the mom of the birthday boy he didn't want to sit next to me because I was too messy with all the food crumbs shooting out of my mouth. I know the kid wasn't trying to be mean, but he got in big trouble later. His mom called my mom that night to apologize. When I got home from the party, I went to the bathroom mirror and started eating a saltine cracker to see what I looked like when I was chewing. The kid was right. I eat like a tortoise, if you've ever seen a tortoise eating. 
like a prehistoric swamp.